Hello guys, um, well, let's start with the introduction to HTML and let's go to codepen.io so we can start using the, um, the interface to start writing code. Okay, so let's go to codepen.io and let's just create a template from a pen. And now, so in order to create an HTML element, we need to use always uh, the curve brackets. So we need to open curve brackets and close curve brackets. And then inside the curve brackets, we put the tag name. So we can put any name inside and then we close. And inside, between the tags, the, the, the curve brackets, we're going to put the information that we want. So it will be like this, for example. So this is how you create an HTML element. Now, uh, by default, there are specific tag names that we, we must use in order to display the information the way we want. So, um, so for example, instead of using name, we're going to use H1. So H1 means heading number one. And as you see, the, the, the way the visual of the information changes a little bit because the browser understands what is an H1, that is a heading number one. And there are, all, there are a lot of tag names. Um, and don't worry about that. We will learn about that eventually. But right now, um, let's focus on the most common tags. For example, the H1 is a very common tag. There's also a P tag uh, that it means paragraph. That is, a, is to create long text, for example. It's very good to create long text. There's also uh, ULs that it means on order list. There are also OL. Right, so these are tag names that they are very common to create, um, to put information in there and display them in different ways. For example, the, the on order list and order list, you can put uh, elements, items there. So the other important thing to understand about HTML beside, beside how to create an element is the hierarchy. So we're creating parents and siblings in order to present information in a understandable way for for a person and also for a machine so for let's do a very simple example like we did in the first video let's do the profile let's let's create a very simple profile so let's start with the heading that is already my name let's do a paragraph and let's say this is the uh, profile of and let's close the p tag because we need to close the tag and then inside here uh we're gonna use the ol let's delete the ol let's just let's use the ul and then inside the ul we're gonna create elements that are gonna be the children of the ul so what let's do let's do that first so li means uh, list item that's what you're gonna put inside UL or OLs, LI is very important. It's, it's just, it just means list items. It's, it's when you're going to uh, specify an, a certain amount of items. So, for example, let's put here in the paragraph this is the profile and favorite hobbies. So, we're going to now present a list of my favorite hobbies and we're going to put here guitar and we're going to close the tag. Let's put another element and let's put um, sports and let's close the tag. And one more item, uh, food. Very, very simple example. All right, so as you can see, the system by itself is showing information in a more ordered way by having a main title 
and then a little description to the list of the hobbies that we have. So this is very understandable for a machine and also for a person. And eventually we will talk about how to put colors, how to put spaces, that that's done in the other window. But it's, I want you to, to understand the introduction of the, of the HTML in this example. So for example, another uh, use of tag names for a specific use is instead of using UL, we use OL. So now instead of an, an order list, it's an order list. So now we have numbers on the elements, as you can see. So if we put another element inside the list, you see it's going to be the element number four automatically because it's, it's, it's already a, a order list. All right. So this is the, main, this is the first uh, example. This is the first example how to create elements, HTML elements, and tag names. So the most important thing to understand here is that you need to open and close tags and use the corv brackets to create HTML elements and there's some exceptions like there will be uh, a few tags that do not need to be closed for example the BR that it means break that if we use it here for example it's just gonna give you another, another break or if we use it for example here inside the you see so it, it breaks the line so this this kind of tags do not need to be closed and also the image tag that we will learn how to use that later you know when we want to add images in inside um, or information or HTML uh, it also do, is, is not needed. Well, there, there are some exceptions of tags that do not need to be closed. That's also very important to mention. And, and also the hierarchy. The hierarchy is very important to understand. Remember that we are creating siblings and children, right? So the H1 is a sibling of the P and also sibling of the OL. So these three first are siblings because they are on the same level. Now, the LI are children only to the OL because they are inside the OL, okay? So this is very important to understand, the hierarchy. Now, um, what if we want to create... Um, let's go to the second example. So I want to create more uh, profiles. So I want to have a list of profiles. So I'm going to use a very common tag that is called division, division tag, that is just div, right? And we need to close it. Now, I want everything, all the information that I have of the profile inside the division. So I'm just going to copy it and separate here, and that's it. Now, this means that all, everything is a children all these elements are children of the division tag, of this specific tag. So these are all children of the division tag. Okay, and they they keep being the same, right? The H1 is a sibling of the P, and they are all siblings of the OL, and they are all children of the, the, the LI are children of the OL. Okay, this is just a hierarchy. Now, using this division is gonna help me to, for example, if I want to create another division, another profile. I just duplicate this and let's put second profile. And let's switch this for dancing. Okay, so we have a second profile and we have the divisions that it helps us to, you see, to uh, order the information in the correct way. Now, we have elements, how to create elements. We have the hierarchy. Now I want to talk about attributes. The attributes is how we, as, we, we can add any kind of attribute to our HTML elements. And that can help us to, to uh, identify elements specifically or 
and or to create specific functionalities for for the divisions and to create programming uh, algorithms. So, for example, uh, attribute that would mean that I can create anything here. I can put here um, a status equal yes. Okay, so I'm I'm adding an attribute named status with a with a value of yes in the division, right? And I could put another status, another attribute on the second division, and I could put no. So now I can differentiate one profile from the other one, right? But this is a very, very basic example. So using the real case scenario, the two most used attributes are classes and IDs. Class and ID. Okay, so let's put, for example, um, profiles. Profile one. The difference between class and ID is that the ID is unique. So when you're gonna use an ID, it's not recommended to repeat the ID in another place of the same window, of the same document. Okay, so for example, this is a very bad, bad, bad practice. So in this case, I will be profile number two because I wanted to be very specific. But the class, for example, the class can be repeated because it's just profiles. Okay, so why are we using attributes on the tag names? Because these attributes are going to let us uh, be more specific on what we want to do. And I'm going to show you now a very quick example is that if I put profiles in the CSS, so the CSS is going to understand that I want to talk to the division called profiles. And I, wanna, and I want them to do something specific. So if I go to profiles and I put here um, color red, now everything is going to be color red. But if I identify as a profile one and I put color black, now we have a difference and this is very important. Okay, so I know we are now we are showing another uh, window. We are using the CSS and we are using colors and brackets and other things we haven't talked about. And we will talk about that eventually, but now I'm talking about attributes and why the attributes are important. Because eventually you will need them to be more specific. And we will talk about CSS um, in a future video because of CSS it will be a whole complete course because there are a lot of properties that we need to talk about and show how the CSS give us the front end uh, uh, tools that we need to create any kind of visual that we want. All right, so now we are going to the next one that it's uh, fundamentals of programming, okay? So for the fundamentals of programming, what we do is that is that we're gonna create algorithms uh, in the JavaScript language or scripting. So we're gonna use this window, but for the but the other thing I want to show you is that you can also uh, write code on your browser. So if you do right click on your browser, especially Google Chrome, you will see uh, inspect, and this will pop out. This will this window it, it might show on a different size. You can change the you can choose where the window appears by clicking on the dots. And you can choose where it goes. You can choose it on the bottom. This is the most common one. Okay, so now you're gonna click on console. You can clear the console if you have a lot of text. Just right click and clear clear console. All right. So why are we here? Because with the console we can do algorithms. So for example, if I put alert, that is a specific function of the browser, we're going to have an alert box, an alert, uh, an alert box, yes. 
So this is what we want. This is what we want to do, create. So the fundamentals of programming. The fundamentals of programming is that um, you only need to understand that there are a specific type of data. Uh, for example, there are numeric type of data, there are a string type of data, and there are Boolean. So the numeric type of data is numbers and everything that you can do mathematical functions. A string data is alphanumeric data, like names and dates and telephone numbers, etc. And the Booleans are uh, yes or no, true or false, true or false, or zero or one. So Boolean is just a true or false type of data. So in the example I'm going to show you, for example, let's start with a numeric type of data. So to make algorithms, I can create variables. In variables, I can put information there where I can store, OK? So I will explain that later. But for now, if you put var, and then we create uh, var a, for example, OK? And I put 1. That is, that is the value of my a. So I'm, I'm storing one on in, the, in this variable. Okay. So var one. And then on var v, I put two. So if I do a mathematical function time a, a plus two plus b, it's going to be three, right? So now if I create another variable called um, c equals and I put apostrophe, and I put one. Now I'm creating alphanumeric. So the first example was numeric. Now I'm creating string alphanumeric type of data, and you will see the difference. So if I do var c, and then I do var d, just because I'm using apostrophe, it's, it, it, it's not numeric, but string. So if I do c times d, it's going to be one and two. Why is this? Because alphanumeric data can be numbers, and if you want to have several numbers together, you don't want the system to, to, to do a mathematical function on these numbers. So you do, you do want to treat them as alphanumeric and not as numeric. So that's a, uh, this is very important to understand also, the difference between alphanumeric and numeric data. So for example, if I create a variable called, called name, I put Javier, and I put a variable called uh, age, and I put 12, and then I call a variable that I put phone, and I put 233-4455, okay, so if I put name plus space plus h plus space plus phone it's going to give me everything together without doing a mathematical function but if i put h time h it's going to give me 24 that's you know that's that's the difference in the programming but if I do phone it's not gonna do a mathematical function because it's treating as an alphanumeric data and not as a number now I want um, so another example of fundamentals of programming is Where to make up an algorithm in a web interface, we need to know where are we getting the data and where are we gonna put the data, right? For example, how do I get the name of the profile number one? Okay, so then I will have to do something, uh, a JavaScript that I can get, for example, the document. Uh, query selector
and I put here for file one Hmm. Okay. 